everyone welcome back to my channel this is Indai Lorelai and today's video I'm gonna talk about my cover letter for my iDash 129F and also how I filled out my iDash 129F form this is actually a request from one of my viewers Dolce Amore 93 I hope you are watching this video she commented on one of my videos hi sis ano yung nasa cover letter mo yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga documents sa folder mo your response is pretty much appreciated Thank you. So, Dolce Amore, as promised, I'm gonna make this video for you. So, here it is. And also, I have included here how I filled out my IDASH 129F form. I just deleted my personal information, but this is how I answered each item on the form IDASH 129F. So, here it is. So, for the IDASH 129F cover letter, U.S. Petitioner, U.S. Address, and then the address where you are going to file your i-129f form so actually you have an option you can file your form i-129f if you're going to use u.s postal service use uscas p.o box 660151 dallas texas 75266 or if you're going to use express mail and courier deliveries you can send it to uscas attention i-129f 2501 South State Highway 121 Business Suite, 400 Louisville, Texas 75067. So this time, guys, in here, I use the U.S. Postal Service. Next date, nature of submission, dear sir or madam, in close, please find my form, I-129F, petition for K-1 fiancé visa for beneficiaries name here and supporting documents in order cover letter this page money order of 535 us dollars made to u.s department of homeland security g1145 e notification of application petition acceptance i-129f form i-129f supplement page 8 part 2 question 54 explaining of meeting divorce decree for petitioner colored passport style photo of the petitioner Colored passport style photo of the beneficiary, petitioner's proof of U.S. citizenship such as passport, letter certifying intent to marry petitioner, letter certifying intent to marry beneficiary, proof of ongoing relationships such as photos. Copies of documents are exact photocopies and I understand I may need to submit original documents to an immigration officer at a later time. Yours truly, yes, petitioner's name here and then signature above the name. Next, G1145, e notification of application petition acceptance. This is actually to be filled out by the U.S. petitioner. So, U.S. petitioner's last name, first name, middle name, email address, and mobile number. Next, Form I-129F, Petition for Alien Fiancé. So this part here on top, don't fill this out. Just continue to Part 1, Information About You. So take note, guys. Part 1, this is information about the U.S. petitioner only. So alien registration number, none. USCIS online account number, none. U.S. Social Security number here. Select one box to indicate the classification you are requesting for your beneficiary, fiancé. And then next, in here, not applicable, your full name. U.S. petitioner's last name, first name, given name. Other names used if, he, if, if your U.S. petitioner has other names or aliases, you can put here, but for my fiancé or husband, he doesn't have any aliases. Next, your mailing address. In care name of street, apartment or floor, city or town, state, zip code, province, postal code, country. Is your current mailing address the same as your physical address? If you answered no, provide your physical address in the items 9A to 9H. So in here... Provide your physical address for the last five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide your current address first if it is different from your mailing address in item numbers 8A to 8I. 
If you need extra space to complete this section, use the space provided in Part A additional information. So street number, apartment floor, city or town, state, zip code, province, postal code, country, date from and date to. So this is already more than five years, so we don't have to fill out the physical address number two. So in here, this section is not applicable. Your employment history, provide your employment history for the last five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide your current employment first. If you need extra space to complete this session, use the space provided part eight additional information. So employer number one for the U.S. petitioner, full name, street, apartment, floor, city or town, state, zip code, province, postal, country, occupation, employment start date, and employment end date. So this is already more than five years. So employer number two session is not applicable here and here, not applicable. So part one, information about you, continuation, other information, gender, male, date of birth, marital status, city, town, village of birth, province or state of birth, country of birth. Information about your parents. This is the U.S. petitioner's parents. So parent number one, last name, first name, given name, date of birth, gender, country of birth, city, town, village of residence, country of residence. Parent number two, last name, first name, middle name, date of birth, gender, country of birth, city, town, village of residence, country of residence. Have you ever been previously married? So we checked here, yes. If you said yes to item number 37, provide the names of each spouse and the date that each prior marriage ended in items 38A to 39 if you need extra space to complete this session, use the space provided in Part 8 additional information. So this is the name of the previous spouse. Last name, first name, middle name, and date marriage ended. Your citizenship information. You are a U.S. citizen through birth in the United States. Have you obtained a certificate of naturalization or a certificate of citizenship in your own name? No, if you answered yes to item number 41, complete item numbers 42A to 42C. So 42A to 42C is not applicable for my fiancé that time. Additional information, have you ever filed form I-129F for any other beneficiary? No, so if you answered yes to item number 43, Provide the responses to item number 44 to 46. So 44 to 46, not applicable. What action did US CIS take on form I-129F for example, approved, denied, revoked? So this one, not applicable. Do you have any children under 18 years of age? Yes. If so, you can state the ages of the children here. Provide all U.S. states and foreign countries in which you have resided since your 18th birthday. Residence 1, state country. Residence 2, state country. Part 2, information about your beneficiary. So this time, guys, this is the alien fiancé information or your beneficiary's information. So last name, first name, middle name, A number. U.S. Social Security number, none, date of birth here, gender, marital status, city, town, village of birth, country of birth, country of citizenship, or nationality. Other names used, I don't have any aliases, so not applicable, not applicable, not applicable. Part 2, continuation about your beneficiary, mailing address for beneficiary, in care name of, street, apartment floor, city, town, state, zip code, province, postal code, country. Your beneficiary's address for the last five years, beneficiary's address one, street, apartment floor, city or town, state, zip code, province, postal, country, date from, and day two. So this one here, the time that we filed this application, it wasn't five years yet. So we have to fill out the Beneficiaries, physical address 2, street number, apartment floor, city, town, state, zip code, province, postal, country, date from, and date 2. Next, your beneficiary's employment history. For the last 5 years, full name of the employer, street, apartment floor, city or town, state, zip code, province, postal, country, beneficiaries, occupation, 
start date and end date. So we have to fill out the beneficiaries employer number two because the time we filed here, it wasn't five years yet. So beneficiaries employer two, full name of the employer, street, apartment, floor, city or town, state, zip code, province, postal code, country, beneficiaries, occupation, start date and then end date here. Information about your beneficiaries parents. So, parent number one, last name, first name, middle name, date of birth, gender, country of birth, city, town, village of residence, country of residence. Part two, parent two information, family name, given name, middle name, date of birth, gender, country of birth, city, town, village of residence, country of residence. Other information about your fiancé, has your beneficiary ever been previously married? No. So, items 35A to 36 are not applicable for me. Has your beneficiary ever been in the United States? No. If your beneficiary is currently in the United States, complete item numbers 38A to 38H. So, 38A to 38H is not applicable for me. Next, does your beneficiary have any children? No. If you answered yes to item number 39, Provide the following information about each child. If you need to provide information for more than one child, use the space provided in Part 8, Additional Information. So, children of beneficiary, not applicable, not applicable, not applicable, not applicable, not applicable. And the rest here, not applicable. Next, address in the United States where your beneficiary intends to live. Of course you are going to live where your fiancé lives, right? So this is the address of your uh, U.S. petitioner. Street number, name, street number, apartment floor, city or town, state, zip code, daytime, telephone number, your beneficiaries, physical address abroad. This is my address back in the Philippines. Your beneficiary's name and address in his or her native alphabet, last name, first name, middle name street number and my address back in the philippines part two information about your beneficiary is your fiance related to you no provide the nature and degree of relationship not applicable have you and your fiance met in person during the two years immediately before filing this petition yes if you answered yes to item number 53, describe the circumstances of your in-person meeting in item number 54. Attach evidence to demonstrate that you were in each other's physical presence during required two-year period. If you answered no, explain your reasons for requesting an exemption from the in-person meeting requirement in item number 54 and provide evidence that you should be exempt from this requirement. Refer to part two item numbers 53 to 54 of the specific instructions section of the instructions for additional information about the requirement to meet. If you need extra space to complete this section, use the space provided in part 8, additional information. In here, we have to provide a supplemental page for the explanation of meeting. So see attach I-129F supplement page 8, part 2, question 54. So international marriage broker IMB information. So this section here is not applicable for us. So no N A N A N A N A N A N A N A N A N A N A N A N A. Consular processing information. Your beneficiary will apply for a visa abroad at the U.S. Embassy or U.S. Consulate at Manila, Philippines. Part three. Other information. Criminal information. Again, guys, this criminal information, this is about the U.S. petitioner's criminal records. Just read the questions here, but for my fiancé or husband, he answered no at every item in this section. So 3A, 3B, 3C here, we did not cross. Then 4A, no if you answered item 4A, yes, so this one is not applicable. Multiple flyer waiver request information, this one is not applicable for us or for him. So we didn't check or we didn't put an X on the box. Part 4, biographic information. Again, this is about your U.S. petitioner's biographic information. Ethnicity, race, um, height, weight, eye color, hair color, 
and then part five petitioners statement contact information declaration and signature petitioner statement select the box for either item number 1a or 1b if applicable select the box for item number two i can read and understand english and i have read and understand every question and instruction on this petition and my answer to every question so we cross this box and the rest not applicable not applicable petitioner's contact information petitioner's date time telephone number mobile number and email address and then after that guys please don't forget to sign in this section for the u.s petitioner and the date of the signature next part six interpreters contact information certification and signature so this section is not applicable for us and then not applicable part seven Contact information, declaration, and signature of the person preparing this petition if other than the petitioner. So this part is also not applicable for us. So part 7, not applicable. And then part 8, additional information. If you need extra space to provide any additional information within this petition, Use the space below if you need more space than what is provided. You may make copies of this page to complete and file with this petition or attach a separate sheet of paper. Type or print your name and A number if any at the top of each sheet. Indicate the page number, part number, and item number to which your answer refers and sign and date each sheet. So in here, family name, U.S. petitioner's last name, U.S. petitioner's first name, and U.S. U.S. petitioner's middle name, A number, none, and the rest here, not applicable. So guys, I think that's the form I-129F, page 13 of 13. We just added here a supplement page. This is the explanation of meeting the question in page 8, part 2, question 54. So let's go back, page 8, here. So in here, if you answered yes to item number 53, describe the circumstances of your in-person meeting in item number 54. Attach evidence, demonstrate that you were in each other's physical presence during the required two-year period. So this is the answer to that um, question. So this is how it looks like. Form H129F Supplement Page 8, Part 2, Question 54. Describe the circumstances under which you met. So dear sir or madam, so you have to explain how did you meet, when did you meet, how do you communicate, when is your personal meeting, when was the last time you met your fiancé, and when do you plan to get married. So in here, signature of the U.S. petitioner, and then date, and then that's it. Example of the supplement page. So there you go guys, I'm just gonna leave the link for the form I-129F if you want to download it yourself and also I'm going to leave the addresses where you can file your form I-129F form and on my next video, I'm going to talk about the letter of intent. So if you haven't subscribed in my channel, please subscribe and click that red button bell so that you will be notified on my next video. So thank you for watching. Bye for now.